The daguerreotype was the first commercially successful photographic process, but shortly after its popularity peaked in the 1840s, a more affordable version came along called the tintype. They were never actually made on tin. They were made on metal, but since they were less expensive than daguerreotypes, they just call them tin types because tin smiths made cheap things. The fact that it was a more affordable format, it brought photography art more into the public realm and pushed it forward into the 20th century. Dave Caramello and Maureen Feely are partners in life and in business, co-owners of Evoke Tintype Photography. When Maureen kind of first saw that image, it, it just evoked a response from her that yeah. was something that she had never felt. It was a very raw image, but at the same time, there was just something so, so beautiful. A career esthetician before this, Maureen discovered tintype during the pandemic when she couldn't work. The first step in the process is pouring this liquid called collodion, and this is basically cotton that's been dissolved in ether and alcohol and it doesn't spill off. The next step is, is putting the plate right into the silver bath to become light sensitive. One of the things I, I love about tintypes is that when you look in, at your image in a tintype, it's actually how you see yourself when you look in the mirror. Modern cameras have mirrors which will flip your image. As someone who spent a good portion of time in front of a camera, I had to give this version a try. The camera is a uh, Deerdorf 8x10 field camera. The one thing that we do differently than the way they did it in the 19th century is we're using strobe lighting. Three, two, one. A brighter and more powerful source of light allows for a shorter exposure time. The long exposure was the only way it could be done back in the 19th century. A lot of people will see photos of people from that time and people weren't smiling and they'll think, oh, it must have been hard times. And it wasn't really hard times. They had to hold still for sometimes 30, 40, or 50 seconds at a time, so they couldn't smile or they'd end up with ghost lips because their lips would be slowly moving back and forth. There isn't a digital camera made today, regardless of the pixelation in the camera, that can get you as grain-free an image as a tintype. It's me! <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful picture. That's great. And it's something just so special to be able to create something from beginning to end like this tangible piece that's going to last forever. It's just a, such a magical experience. Seven decades after the tintype made its debut, the B.F. Keith Memorial Theater opened its doors, a lavish memorial to the father of vaudeville. Real Carrera marble, nothing's faux here. Out in the grand lobby, um, the, uh, it's not just opulent. Uh, it was called the Palace of the People because of all the fine artwork they had and the statuary and the finishes. Jim Jensen is a senior advisor at what's now known as the Boston Opera House. The acoustics are spectacular. The auditorium, by most standards, is wider than most theaters. The mezzanine and dress circle come down closer over the orchestra section than they do in most theaters. Like photography, this theater has seen many iterations of vaudeville theater, then a cinema, and an opera house under the direction of Sarah Caldwell. She made the cover of Time Magazine at least once, maybe twice. She was a remarkable talent. She staged operas in ways that made her world renowned. And uh, she purchased the theater, uh, she did her best to keep it up, um, but it was hard to make ends meet. During Caldwell's tenure, the theater fell into great disrepair. At one point, there were sort of diapers hanging from the ceiling because they had to catch the falling plaster. After the National Trust for Historic Preservation listed the theater as one of the most endangered buildings in America, a restoration plan was approved. Everything from what's called the proscenium wall, which is where the auditorium meets the stage, everything from the proscenium wall to Washington Street had to be restored to historic restoration standards, but everything from the proscenium wall back was completely modernized. It was built to impress, but it was also built to perfectly accommodate performance in an era where there was no amplification. You had to be heard from the downstage edge in the last row without a microphone. You see people getting together and sharing a common enjoyment in something. Um, and that's really important to a sense of community. 
And the Opera House, of course, now home to the Boston Ballet and Broadway in Boston. Next up there, the Book of Mormon. Great show, Tony Award winning. Uh, February 13th for a week there. Excellent. And back to Evoke. It used to take 10 to 15 minutes just to make one tin type photo. Mm. Not anymore. Um, and they've remained popular for about 20 to 25 years. And I just will give Erica a shout out. You looked beautiful in your image. <laughs> <laughs> she did. It was incredible. Still ahead of beloved Irish pub in Cambridge. <laughs>